You are sleeping on Lima, with the number one rated restaurant in the world and four ranked within the global top 50. It's a crime that we don't group Lima alongside New York City, Paris, and Tokyo as one of the food capitals of the world. If you like food, go ahead and book your flight to Peru. I stayed in Lima for five whole weeks, over one month in the nation of Peru. I settled myself into the Barranco neighborhood and made myself a list of all the restaurants that I needed to try. I ate winner after winner after winner until I got sick with food poisoning for eight whole days. That's why I wanted to make this video. The food in Lima will blow your mind. It is so good. But if you don't know what to look out for, it's not always the most friendly to foreign digestion, if you know what I mean. But these places that I'm gonna mention, you don't have to worry about. Stay with me to the end. I'm also going to tell you about some places that you should avoid and some iconic moments that you have to experience while you're in town. The number one in this year's edition of the world's 50 best restaurants and therefore the world's best restaurant 2023 sponsored by San Pellegrino and Aquapana is... Fentan! Okay, I did not eat here. Let's get that out of the way right off the bat. Central is the number one restaurant in the entire world. Ranked higher than anything in Paris, New York City, Tokyo, Berlin, Mexico City, or anywhere else for that matter. Chef Virgilio Martinez Veliz has made a menu based around the different elevations in Peru. If you're planning your trip well into the future and don't mind dropping some serious cash on one of the best meals in the globe, go ahead and head to Central's website where you can make a reservation. They also have a wait list if you're willing to take a risk on a shorter timeline. Central is located in Barranco, which is my recommendation for where you should stay during your time in Lima. Others might recommend the neighborhoods of Miraflores or San Isidro, and they're both very lovely, but Barranco is an artist and a food lover's haven, and I fell in love immediately. It's the city's bohemian district, and there are murals all over the walls by some of the most famous muralists in the country, including Yade Rivera and Elliot Tupac. You'll find theaters and art galleries as well, in addition to a vast collection of incredible restaurants. Central, as I mentioned, is located here. But if you're looking to eat somewhere that you won't need a reservation and is a lot more accessible, my suggestion is Isolina. Isolina Taberna Peruana is just a few blocks away from the central square and not far from Barranco's famous Bridge of Sighs. I did eat here. Twice, actually. If it's your first time, go for the arroz con taparo. It's a simple dish consisting of rice, meat, egg, and with a plantain on the side. I want you to get this as your first meal because it's an incredible introduction to how well Peru does simple dishes. They somehow infuse so much flavor, texture, and substance into otherwise familiar aspects of dining. On my second visit, I got the aji de gallina, which is another very famous Peruvian dish. I'll talk more about that in a bit, but first, we have to talk about three very famous Peruvian beverages. I've never been anywhere that has so many iconic signature drinks. I'm not just talking alcoholic drinks either. The most famous drink to come out of Peru might be Inca Cola. It's very yellow, as you can see, just bright, bright yellow, but it doesn't taste yellow. It actually tastes pink, very much like bubble gum. The people of Peru love this stuff and you will genuinely see people drinking it all throughout the day. The Pisco Sour is Peru's signature cocktail. It's kind of hard to miss. They try really hard to push this onto tourists, which would be really annoying if it weren't so good. It's made from Pisco grapes. And in my opinion, the Pisco Sour tastes similar to a margarita, except without all the extra kick that you normally get from the tequila. They go down easy, but don't be fooled. They pack a punch and you'll start to feel them pretty quickly. You can grab a great one at Taberna Quirolo, which is over near the Larco Museum if you happen to be headed that way. Chicha is an Incan drink made from fermented corn, and they've been making it in Peru for a really long time. I mean, there is some serious tradition here. Most often you'll see people drinking chicha morada, which is the non-alcoholic version of the drink. Despite what you're imagining, it's actually very light and refreshing, much like a fruit juice. One of my favorite ways to drink chicha morada is alongside some of Peru's famous rotisserie chicken. And nowhere does it better than they do at Pardo's. They have a great chicken sandwich, but don't let yourself get distracted. You are ordering the half chicken. It comes with a side of fries or potatoes, but that's not important. The chicken is the star. The time I took this video, I let myself order something else. The barbecue chicken. It's fine. It looks nice on video, but trust me when I say order the half chicken. I don't know what they do to chicken in Peru. I can't explain it. This is just chicken, and yet somehow, 
Another great chicken spot is Don Belisarios. Cardos and Don Belisarios are both chains within Lima, so you should have no trouble finding one from wherever you're at. My go-to was for sure the one in Miraflores. If Barranco is Brooklyn, then Miraflores is Manhattan. From up on those hilltops, you can see the most gorgeous sunset you have ever seen in your life every single day. If you're in love, even better to do so from Parque del Amor, which features a huge statue of two people making out, uh, just in case you weren't sure what it is that you were supposed to be doing there. The Larcamar is the famous shopping center in Miraflores. It's basically an open air mall, and it's one of the top attractions in all of Lima. It has alpaca clothing, it has famous brands like H&M, it has an IMAX movie theater, it has a Chili's. Did I eat at that Chili's? Right to jail, right away. On top of all that, the restaurants in Miraflores are second to none. My favorite was Panchita. Now the reason that I waited to mention Aji de Gallina is because this is the place that you need to go to enjoy it. What is Aji de Gallina? Well, Aji is a yellow pepper that is used in a lot of Peruvian dishes. It's a bit spicy, but not too much, and it's everywhere in Lima. Aji de Gallina takes that pepper and makes it into a stew alongside of chicken and then poured over potatoes and rice. It's another super simple dish, but it's a classic in Peru and one of the very best. Pro tip, my friend Caroline joined me before we went to Cusco and she ordered the pork belly. She absolutely loved it. And if you aren't feeling the aji de gallina, try the pork belly, you will be just as happy. It's crazy we've made it this far into the video without talking about ceviche, right? Ceviche is a famous dish in many places, but believe me, they claim it as their own in Peru. It is their national dish, and they do it well. Not far from Panchita in Miraflores, Punto Azul is super famous and offers a bunch of different preparation options for its ceviche. Caroline got hers with octopus, and I got mine with the fish of the day alongside their house special red sauce. It looks spicy, but it was actually a little bit sweet. The way to eat ceviche in Peru is to take a little bit of sweet potato on your spoon alongside the fish and some lime juice and eat them all together at once. It's an amazing combination of flavors. It has the sweet, the sour, and the savory all together in one. Peruvians will tell you that the best time to eat ceviche is for lunch or maybe even for breakfast when the fish is still fresh. Basically, just don't eat it at dinner time or you might get sick. Speaking of getting sick, it's pretty easy to do in Peru, unfortunately. It can be avoided, but you have to be intentional about it, and even then, sometimes it still comes down to luck. I got sick after going on a street food tour with a professional guy. Now, I love street food, and the street food in Peru was delicious. We had ceviche, we had beef heart, we had corn, we had stuffed potato, we had rice pudding, we had donuts and honey. But unfortunately, something was contaminated. It's impossible to know what caused it specifically, but several members of my tour group got sick. So, what should you watch out for? Well, firstly, the tap water in Peru is not safe to drink. As such, you also wanna be careful in any situation where tap water might have been used. Avoid ice cubes in your drink and avoid eating any fresh fruits and vegetables that might have recently been rinsed with tap water before being served. Now, drinking tap water might be something to avoid, but Lima does know how to creatively use water in other ways. The magic circuit of water is precious. It's a gorgeous nightly display near the historical center with exhibitions most evenings. Water flows alongside light projections and music for about 15 minutes to tell an incredible story. The things that the water does here, I, I didn't even know it was possible. It's super cheap to enter. It's only four soles for one adult, which is just over one US dollar, and it's free for children under five. There are other exhibitions as well, including a playground, multiple water fountains, and a famous walkway where you can pass underwater that flows directly overhead. It reminded me a whole lot of Disney's fireworks show, actually. I only had the chance to visit once, but I really regret not going back for a second or a third time. Pro tip, the line can get really long, especially just after sunset, but don't let that discourage you. We were through the entire thing in less than 10 minutes. Now remember, I stayed for five weeks in Lima, okay? I ate so much and I filmed it all and not nearly everything can fit into one video. Some other places to write down that you don't wanna miss are LA 73 in Barranco. I think I ate there seven times. I got their barbecue chicken salad over and over again for lunch. It might be the best salad I've ever eaten. If you're in the historic center and you're near the San Francisco convent and catacombs, you can't miss eating one of Lima's famous churros. I waited in line for about a half an hour to try one of these from Churros San Francisco, which is the most popular one in the area. I 
I also tried some of the knockoff churros from the stalls nearby, and in my opinion, they were just as good, so don't waste your time standing in line if you don't want to. Before Lima, the longest trip I ever took to one place was about two weeks. At five weeks, things start to feel different. I could walk in any direction away from the apartment and know exactly where I was without looking at a map. I knew the servers at my favorite restaurants, and I got to see a brand new mural in Barranco slowly being finished over time. I became friends with a doorman in my building, and we talked about how cold it is in New York City. And yeah, we both agreed that it's better to avoid New York City in January. Long term or slow travel is new to me, but I've already learned that it's both exciting and a little bit heartbreaking. <laughs> I miss Lima so much already, it was sort of just starting to feel like home as I started to pack my bags. The people there are so nice, and they love their city, and they are really, really, really good at preparing a top-notch meal.